Well, God bless you all. Thank you for those of you that are with us in-house, for those of you that are watching at home online. We're going to jump in, and we're going to talk about defeating the giant of unforgiveness. Hopefully, you've got your notes, and you can follow along. A couple of weeks, I talked about defeating the giant of anger. And we talked about what are some of the root causes to anger. And we discovered that one of those root causes is unresolved root issues. And one of those unresolved root issues can be unforgiveness, unresolved hurts in our lives. Now, we all know that life happens, right? There will be people that will say things that will hurt you. There will do things that will hurt you. People offend. Uh, Sometimes people do things that are unjust, things that are unright, and they inflict pain on you. Now, you can't stop life from happening, but what you can control is how you respond to the life that's happening around you. And you don't want to let the bitterness, the resentment, the grudge, the unforgiveness settle into your heart because it'll turn you into a very negative, bitter, and angry person. Now, the bi- uh, let's go ahead and I want to give you an illustration, and Sherry's coming on up here to join me. Sherry, I'm going to have you hold that right out there. Okay, I want you to imagine, uh, uh, go ahead and come over just a little bit, that this pillowcase represents your life. And I've got a bowl full of potatoes. And these potatoes represent all the different types of hurts that come into our lives. Obviously, one of the most obvious is is people say hurtful things. And so we're going to throw those in there. People do hurtful things. Some of you, you may remember that third grade teacher that made you move because you got blamed for talking in class when it was actually Johnny doing it. And you are so mad at that teacher. And so you throw that into the bag. What are some other things, okay? Other things that cause hurt in our lives. Have you ever been betrayed? Let's throw some of that in there. Some betrayal. Some offense. Earlier during breakfast church, somebody said abuse. You know, that's something that people encounter in their lives. They've encountered abuse. Maybe they've experienced rejection. They've experienced the pain of having a parent walk out on them. Maybe they've had the pain of a marriage that broke apart. Maybe that person, that marriage partner that vowed to be faithful to you, and they weren't. And that's left hurt in your life. Thank you, Sherry. And what can happen here is rather than taking that hurt and bringing it before the throne of God, and unpacking it right there and giving it to him. We can easily throw that over our shoulder and we harbor that resentment, that grudge, that bitterness, that unforgiveness. And we end up carrying this extra weight around and it wears us out. And you know, there's something else that happens with potatoes when they're left in a bag too long. You guys know, right? Pretty soon they start to rot, they start to smell. They start to sprout eyes. And you know, what you got to do is rather than harboring and carrying this thing around and starting to have bitterness is zooed out of your life, we've got to learn to take this and give it to the Lord. This is why I say that forgiveness isn't a gift to the other person. It's a gift to yourself. It's a gift to the people that you love. Now, the Bible tells us in Hebrews, it says this, see to it that no one misses the grace of God. That's an interesting thing to say right there. Would you say that with me? Misses the grace of God. It says, see to it that nobody misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and to defile many. Now, you can't see a root, but you can certainly see the fruit. And the fruit of a bitter root is a bitter life. And this is why the Bible says this in Proverbs. It says, above all else. Now, whatever the Bible says, and it doesn't say very often, but right here where it says, above all else, what should you do? 
you should definitely listen. He's saying this is important. This is significant. This is above all else. He says above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Can you hear the urgency in this passage? This is paramount. This is important. This is above all. And he says that you must guard your heart because it is the wellspring of life. Why would you need to do that? Because a wellspring, it flows out. And if you have allowed bitterness to settle into your heart and into your life, what happens is the people you love most, your children, your spouse, your friends, they begin to drink of the bitterness that's flowing out of your life. What has defiled you is now defiling many. It's defiling the very people that you love. Now, I believe that Jesus wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be whole. Can anybody say, amen, I want that too, right? He doesn't want you bitter. He doesn't want you angry and depressed. And so we've got to learn to let this stuff out. Why must we do that? Because first off, we don't want to be packing around this weight that defiles our hearts. And secondly, we don't want the people we love that are downstream of our lives drinking from our bitter well. We must bring that stuff to the Lord. And you know, when you allow all that negativity, all that hurt, the, the resentment, the grudges, when you pile that up in your life, you end up taking the space that God would much rather fill with all of the good things that he has uh, for you. Now, the problem with unforgiveness is this. One big problem is that you are giving the people that have hurt you in the past the power to keep hurting you in the present. And what is hurting you in the present is also hurting the people that are downstream of your life. You do not want to give anybody that level of power in your life. And the Bible says this, that blessed are the pure in heart. How do you have a pure heart? By emptying out that bitterness so that you can be filled with the love and the goodness of God. Now, sometimes it's hard to forgive. You say, well, they don't deserve it. And you might be right. They don't deserve it. But the reality is this, is that forgiveness is much more for you than it is for them. And like I said with these potatoes, it's much more a gift to yourself than it is a gift to anybody else because you do not want to be carrying around that stinky bitterness and resentment and grudges in your life. Now, recently I was listening to Joel Osteen and he told a story about a woman named Mary Johnson. And this story really stuck with me. Mary Johnson had one son. He was 20 years old. He'd gone to a party on a Friday night, and he had encountered another young man. He was 16. His name was Oshi. They had never met before. But they had some kind of conflict. And in a moment of impulse, Oshi pulled out a gun and shot and killed Mary Johnson's only son. She was broken. She was angry. She was bitter. She told the judge, he's an animal, and he deserves to be locked in a cage for the rest of his life. And when, when he was only charged with second-degree murder, she became even more bitter and isolated. She began to retreat, and for the next 10 years, she just lived in isolation in her home, stewing and angry and bitter, and resentful but after 10 years she knew it was time to forgive Jesus had told her it's time and so she reached out to the jail to find to the prison to see if she could come visit and they gave her permission but oh she he wasn't ready for that but she stayed persistent and after time oh she said yes come and when the two met for the first time oh she wrapped his arms around her and Mary tells the story that she could just feel the anger and the bitterness just leaving her body and she says at that moment not only did I forgive but I got a new son 
It would be seven years until Oshi would be released. And when he had no place to live, she said, Oshi, you can come live next to me. She formed an organization called From Death to Life. It's to help mothers that have lost children to violence to begin to heal. Now she and Oshi, they speak in churches and schools, conferences and seminars to help bring healing to broken parents. And you know, Mary tells the story of what inspired her to forgive that she'd heard a story of two ladies that had met in heaven and they'd become very good friends. And both of those ladies, each of them had a son. And the one lady asked the other, well, who's your son? And she says, well, my son's Jesus. I'm Mary. And Mary asked, well, who's your son? And she said, my son is Judas. My son betrayed your son. When Mary heard that story and understood how Mary, the mother of Jesus, would embrace and have relationship with and forgive Judas's mother, she knew it was time for her to forgive. You know, God will use your pain to accomplish his purpose and his plan. And I know many of you, you've been deeply, deeply hurt in your life. You've experienced rejection, betrayal, and abuse. And I'm not telling you, just get over it. But I am saying you can get past it. You do not have to stay stuck in that place any longer. And you know, when Jesus was hanging on that cross, he'd been abandoned and rejected, betrayed by his own disciples. He'd been whipped beaten, crowned of thorns on his head, and he's nailed to a cross. And as he hung there, he knew before he died, there was one more thing he needed to do. He had to do it. He could have just simply died and gone to heaven. But he paused for a moment. He looked out over that crowd. Maybe he even was able to see some of his own followers on the far back, hiding in the back. The very crowd that had just nailed him to the cross. And he pleaded. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus knew something. He didn't want to leave this earth with anything negative in him. And he took it all out and he laid it at the foot of the cross. That is the example that Jesus gives to you and to me. You know, if you go around holding on to that stuff, holding on to that bitterness, and you may have very good reason to be bitter, but can I submit to you, the bitterness will only make you worse. It doesn't make you better. It will make you angry. Yes, you can carry it around, but it only hurts you. And we we must learn to do exactly what Jesus did and come and pour it all out right at the foot of the cross so that we could experience his grace and his forgiveness. Have you ever noticed in the story of the prodigal son, the older brother who was so indignant? He, He was an angry young man. He had his own bitterness issues that were going on in there. And when the prodigal son was welcomed home and they threw a party, there was a party going on inside the house. The older brother allowed his grudge, his unforgiveness, his resentment to keep him from entering into the celebration. The party went on without him. And, you know, God is throwing a kingdom party, and the party is going on. It's either going to go with or without you, but he is not canceling the party. You do not want to miss out on all the goodness, all the grace, all the joy that God has for you because you choose to hang on to some grudge or some resentment. It's time for us to empty that out and receive his grace into our lives. So let me talk with you briefly about why you should forgive, why it's important to do that. And the first thing is this. I must forgive because God has forgiven me. Did you notice it says, see to it that nobody misses the grace of God? 
and you see what happens when you miss, when you miss the magnitude of what God has done for you, when somehow you're blinded to the great debt that you had that you could never pay, that he washed away. When you are blind to that reality, you have missed God's grace that will defile your heart And what defiles your heart will defile the people that are downstream of your life. And so the Bible tells us this in Ephesians. It says, forgive one another as God has forgiven you through Jesus Christ. How has God forgiven you? He's forgiven you completely. He's forgiven you completely. He's wiped the debt clean. A debt that you could never pay. And when you keep that in the forefront of your mind, that I had this debt stacked to the ceiling and beyond that I could never pay, but God in his mercy and his grace forgave me, now I understand grace and I am able to give grace. You know, when you come across somebody, and I'm not talking about anybody in this room, and hopefully I'm not talking about anybody that's watching me that's sitting on a couch right now, but when you encounter somebody who's harsh, demanding, judgmental, unbending, unforgiving, unforgiving, critical, angry all the time, ungracious, you can be sure of one thing. They have missed the grace of God. How can I be so sure in saying that? Because when you understand the magnitude, even if you understand it just partially, the magnitude of the debt that you had, that he has forgiven, that grace, that revelation will completely transform you. When you understand and receive grace, it now gives you the ability to give and to extend grace. So I should forgive because I've been forgiven of a debt I could never pay. Another reason is this. I should forgive because God's love is in me. The Bible says what? That God is? God is love. And if you've asked God to come into your life, how many of you have done that? If you've asked him to come into your life, then what is inside of you? Love. Why? Because God is love. And let's talk about some of the distinctives of love. In 1 Corinthians, it says love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking. And then listen to what it says here. It is not easily angered. Would you say that with me? Love is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Think about that for a moment. There's a direct connection between keeping record and your anger (laughs) uh, level. Because when you start to keep records of wrong, even if it's just a mental list in your head, when you hold on to that stuff, what happens is you start to become an angry person. Now, the Bible, somebody once said this. They said, love has a very long fuse. I love that. That's so good. Love has a long fuse. But what happens when you choose to uh, harbor unforgiveness or resentment, what you've done is you've taken what should be a long fuse, and you've cut it off, and you've made a very short fuse, and that is not loving. Now, are any of you list people? Do you make lists? You make a shopping list? That's a good thing, right? Right? Uh, maybe you make a, uh, a to-do list, you know, give that one to your husband on Saturday morning. Here, honey, here's the list I made you. <laughs> or how about a Christmas list? Do you guys make a Christmas list? Am I on your list? Well, make sure you add me. Christmas isn't that far away. So keeping lists can be a very good thing, but if you're keeping a mental list of how this person hurt you and what that person said and how I was wounded and rejected by that person, then what happens is that is not loving and you're allowing this toxic bitterness to settle into your heart. And you protect what you love, right? 
what you value, you take care of. And so if you value your children, your mate, your friendships, or even your very life, then guard it. Because where you allow that bitterness to come into your heart, it will flow downstream and touch others. This is why he says, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Another reason is this, is that, hey, I'm going to need forgiveness in the future. And so will you. I may even need it before the day is over. <laughs> you know, but the Lord's Prayer says this, to forgive us our sins just as. Would you say that with me? Forgive us our sins just as we have forgiven those that have sinned against us. What would you think of the degree, if the degree of forgiveness you receive from the Lord is somehow contingent on the degree of forgiveness that you are willing to extend to others? Think about that for a moment. He says, forgive us just as I forgive others. In essence, what he's saying in this prayer is, Lord, I'm... I'm okay receiving the level of forgiveness from you that I'm willing to give to somebody else. Well, how much forgiveness do I need from Jesus? I need all of it. I need forgiveness to the max. And he says, then do that. Because when you do that, you have caught grace. Don't miss grace. Catch it. Catch what grace is is all about. You know, there's no question that I'm going to need to be forgiven again, and the forgiveness I receive, when it's in direct proportion to the forgiveness I extend, then I'm highly motivated to become a forgiving person, and that's much easier to do when I've caught what grace is all about. When I understand the magnitude of what he has done for me, it now becomes far easier for me to extend grace to others. So how do you do this? I mean, it, Pastor Dave, you make it sound so easy. Just forgive. You don't understand how deeply I've been hurt. Listen, I'm not trying to minimize the pain that you've experienced in your life. I'm just saying, why continue to give power to somebody who's so far down the road they don't even know that they've hurt you? It's time to unpack the bitterness. And the way you can do that is this. First off, forgiveness is not a feeling. You don't have to sit around and wait till you finally feel like you're ready to forgive. Forgiveness is something you can do by faith. Robert, if I'm a, you know, if, if you go and cut me off on the road and I'm uptight at you and I have this feeling that I want to drive my car right up your tailpipe right? Maybe drive by you and just, well, I would, no, I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do that. But uh, I'd maybe be tempted to, though. <laughs> uh, I feel like it, but it doesn't mean I have to do it. And same thing with, uh, with forgiveness. I may not feel like it, but I can make a choice to do it. It's the decision I make by faith. It's just like when you receive Jesus into your life. He came in. You may not have feel, felt anything, but by faith, you received him into your life. And the same thing. Forgiveness is not contingent on a feeling. It's making a choice to do what's right. Secondly is this. Forgiveness is not forgetting. You hear people say, I can just never forget what they've done. Well, that's because we're human beings. We don't have the capacity to, well, we forget some things, like where did I put my keys? <laughs> but there's other things. We just can't seem to forget those things. But God, because he is all-powerful, he says this, that he remembers your sin no more. He casts it into the sea of forgetfulness. He casts it as far as the east is from the west. He is God, so he can choose to remember no more. We are people, we remember. But just because you remember the hurt you that was inflicted on you does not mean that you cannot forgive. 
you can still make the choice to do that. And what you'll discover is over time, the memory may not be completely erased, but it will certainly begin to fade and lose its power. Forgiveness doesn't mean that I automatically need to trust the person that hurt me all over again. Robert, I'm picking on you today. If uh, Kelly and I are going on vacation and we say, Robert, will you house sit for us? And you say, I'm happy to do that. And we come home, we discover that uh, somehow, inadvertently, you'd run uh, Juicy, our dog, through the dishwasher. It's like, could we forgive you? Yes, we could. But Kelly, uh, she, it, it would take her a bit, but she could. But would we trust you again? If we're going on vacation, we're not calling Robert to house sit for us, okay? Why? Because the trust had been shattered, and shattered takes time to rebuild, but that doesn't mean I haven't forgiven you. Forgiveness doesn't mean you're right, I'm wrong. No, because the reality is there were some things that were very wrong, that were unjust, that were sinful things that may have been done to you. And it's not to say, oh, you're right, I'm wrong. No, there were wrong things done, but you can still forgive. So what is it? What is forgiveness? It is relinquishing the right to get even. It's choosing to live with an open hand and an open heart to bring it to the Lord. Besides, it is exhausting to run around carrying all that hate and that resentment. It's exhausting. And you know, you're going to need all the energy that God has for you to be the man, to be the woman, to be the parent, to be the person that God has called you to be. You do not want to dissipate that energy carrying around all of this resentment. You got to let it go. So forgiveness is very much the heart of Christ. We'd read Ephesians, but let me read it again. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as in Christ, God has forgiven you. Forgiveness reflects his heart. And you know, today, you may be hauling around this bag of bitterness, this bitter root, so to speak. These, these bitter seeds have been planted in your heart. And now here you are, years later from the pain that was inflicted upon you, but you're still angry. You're still bitter. You're still resentful. Today is a prophetic day. Today is the day for those roots to be severed. For those seeds to be tilled under. And for there to be something new planted in your life. His grace. His love. His mercy. His forgiveness. And what will happen? Just like when those negative seeds were planted, that bitter root took root and it produced an ugly harvest. In time, when you plant grace, mercy, love, forgiveness, those seeds will begin to grow up and produce a whole different crop in your life. A harvest that's consistent with the life that's been touched by his incredible grace. It's time to tear up the list. How can I do that? by understanding, well, he tore up mine. I am so grateful that he does not keep my list, but he's torn it up. Because I have been forgiven much, I can forgive much. Because his love is in me. And love doesn't keep a record of wrong. And in fact, scripture tells us, not only does love not keep a record of wrong, but love covers over a multitude of sin. I will need forgiveness in the future. I will need forgiveness. I will need grace in the future. And because of that, I should be a forgiving and gracious person today. I'm going to ask if we could bow our heads together.
And for those of you that are with me in-house, for those of you that are at home, allow the Holy Spirit to search your heart right now. Is there unforgiveness harboring inside of your heart? Past wounds and past hurts that you've not brought to Jesus. Do what he did while he was on the cross. He made a decision to not leave this earth with any bitter negative thing in him. Make that decision. Bring it before him. Lord, this morning we come before you and in those places where we've allowed a bitter root to spring up in our lives, it's causing trouble for me. It's causing trouble for many. It's caused bitterness to flow out of the well of my life. And I'm mindful of the fact that there are people I love that are downstream drinking from what flows out of my life. So today, I choose, I bring it to you, till under those bitter roots. And Lord, in that place, let there be your love, your grace, mercy, forgiveness. And let that begin to spring up and produce a harvest that is consistent with a life that has been touched by the amazing grace of God. You know, if you've never asked Jesus into your life, or maybe today it's time for you to recommit yourself to him, I want to give you that opportunity. Would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Lord, come into my life. Come in and forgive me. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Wipe the slate clean. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.